Thank you everybody who is joining us today for um, our webinar, Faith for the Earth. My name is Cynthia Gonzalez. I'm the advocacy coordinator for the Missionary Society of St. Columban. And I work for the St. Columban JP Justice, Peace and Ecology office, uh, which is the advocacy office uh, for the US region. And we welcome and thank you all for joining us again for um, the month of April webinar, which is dedicated for the earth. We are um, titling this webinar, Faith for the Earth. And um, today joining me from the office in Columbia JP as well is Wesley Cococello, who is our communication manager. He uh, is going to be monitoring the chat and just helping us with some other uh, logistics things for this webinar, but he's here with me. And um, we are also very happy to have today three very special Columbans um, for this webinar. In previous webinars, we had other partners and presenters, and this is a very the first one where we all of all of our presenters are Columban, and we're so happy to to have them share a little bit of their work. Um, we have um, we have Father John. Leiden from, uh, he's a, a Colombian priest working in the Philippines, so he's collect, con connecting today from the Philippines. We also have uh, Miss Amy Echeverria, she is our international JPIC coordinator, um, joining from the US, and Tevita Nai Casawalu, hopefully I pronounced your last name correctly, um, a Colombian missionary joining us from Fiji. Thank you again, the three of you to, for joining us. Um, I will now uh, share a little bit about our society for those of you who, who are just um, learning about who we are and joining our, our webinars. So the Missionary Society of St. Columbwood was founded in 1918 and it's a society of priests and lay people uh, we refer to them as Columbans. Um, uh, they live, we live, Columbans live in solidarity with those who are made poor and marginalized, including the earth. And Columbans uh, work, live and work across the world, supporting efforts to help the communities they serve, uh, including the earth. And they do, the, they do this through direct service projects, educational resources, community emp empowerment programs, and other initiatives. And today we're going to be, we're so lucky to hear about some of these programs that are, um, that they are leading. Uh, my office, the St. Columban JPE, it's like St. Columban Justice, Peace and Ecology, was funded in 1985 and is the National Advocacy Office for the Missionary Society of St. Columban in the United States. Uh, our office uh, serves as a line of communication between Columban missionaries on the ground and policy maker, makers uh, in the US and Washington DC specifically. Um, in this role, our office is focused on working on structural change and advocacy and developing policies that um, protect and defend um, the poor the and marginalized communities that Columban serve around the world. So again, welcome all of you and with that, uh, I will just uh, get us started with the topic for this webinar. Um, for more than 40 years, Columban missionaries uh, around, who are serving around the world have been at the forefront protecting our environment from very destructive practices and promoting sustainable alternatives, right? In, their, in this mission of living in harmony with, with, with our planet Earth. Uh, with our common in our common home, um, their their experience of living in the natural world with these marginalized communities um, and exploited communities has inspired uh, Columbans to seek ways to restore that right relationship with God, God's, with all of God's creation. So not only people, but um, uh, all of uh, uh, God's creation most and all of the resources that we have. Uh, over those 40 years, uh, Columbans have learned how to, how to best take care of creation and have implemented some very uh, amazing projects. Um, so 
with that uh, in this spirit of uh, Earth Day uh, celebration of our Earth, our planet Earth. We're hosting this webinar where our three Columbians will be talking about their projects. So now uh, I'm going to introduce our first speaker. Father John Layton. Um, again, he's a priest of, of the Missionary Society in Columban and an eco theologian. He's originally from Ireland. He serves in the Philippines and he has served for over 40 years. Father Layton is a founding member of the Laudato Si movement and works with Laudato Si movement in the Philippines, uh, the national chapter. He was involved in setting up the Center for Ecozoic Living and Learning, or CELL. I was going to tell us more about CELL. CELL is an uh, eco spirituality center that uh, propagates the. So with that, we're not hearing you too well, Cynthia. Sorry about that. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Good. Good morning or good whatever it is. <laughs> to everybody. Um, let me share my screen. Um, nothing. Is we can see your screen. Oh, really? I can't see. Yeah, OK. You can see it now. Yes. Okay. So he hello, everybody, whatever time of the day it is. I I'd like to um, introduce you or give you a kind of a tour about CELL, which is the Center for Ecozoic Living and Learning, which was set up in 1998. That's a long time ago. And um, uh, it's a uh, CELL was a, is an it's an organization, but it's it's basically an eco spirituality center, and um, was founded by uh, myself and two other uh, Colombian priests and the local person uh, landowner um, in 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 a, a town uh, just uh, about over an hour south of Manila, a place where the Columbans had been uh, for particularly during the Second World War. So the Columbans were very well remembered there. Um, uh, the name of the um, of the center is um, Center for Ecozoic Living and Learning. Now the word that doesn't it may that's not really used is ecozoic. Um, ecozoic comes from uh, Thomas Berry, uh, and it's his way of looking at the ecological crisis. He doesn't think you know we're going through um we're going through a human um, crisis like we've gone through a crisis like uh, during the fall of the Roman. Roman civilization or you know something like that uh, he puts the crisis in terms of the earth uh, the earth eras so he, he would say that you know in terms of earth era we're we're in an era that started with the when the dinosaurs disappeared the the, the 65 million years ago and um, humans uh, uh, um, mammals emerged as the dominant um, group of uh, species and uh, of course uh, among the mammals the humans and um, this has been what has characterized the last 65 million years which is the Cenozoic era but Thomas Berry would say that our current crisis is actually bringing 
a geologic or biolog biological era to an end. And we're at the terminal phase of the Cenozoic era. And our, his vision for the future is that we, um, we consciously create the Ecozoic era where the human would be, it would be in harmony with the rest of creation, because one of the characteristics of our, of our, um, we we have become a, 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 a such a big force that we are actually shutting down uh, a, 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 ge a geologic and biologic era on on planet Earth. So he talks about the, a new vision where the human would be at harmony, would live in harmony with the um, with the rest of creation. So Ecozoic is, um, it's, it's, um, it's, it, it needs to be understood as uh, in, de in terms of deep time, which is the um, eco is uh, an era. Our eco is a home and Zoic uh, is life. And um, it's an, then it's an era uh, in terms of earth time. Um, this is, um, this is very, um, might be unusual, but in terms of Laudato C si, number 202, um, uh, Pope Francis puts this, I mean, affirms this kind of thinking where he says, he's talking about what we, the, the, the things that have to change and the most important thing. And I, I, he, without saying it directly, he talks about our perspective. He says, many things have to change course but it is we humans above all who need to change and then he says the following which i think is very interesting from this point of view we lack an awareness of our common origin of our mutual belonging and of a future to be shared with everyone this basic awareness would enable the development of new convictions, attitudes, and forms of life. A great cultural, spiritual, and educational challenge stands before us, and it will demand that we set out on the long path of renewal. So I think that um, cell, the setting up of cell anticipated that and um, So, um, Ecozoic is, is, is a vision of the human, a whole new era in, in, the, in the history of the planet where this troublesome species of ours gets its act together and begins to stop destroying everything and begins to work in harmony with everything. Okay, it's a vision or a dream of the earth where all forms of life have a home and earth is full of life. So cell was established uh, as a place where um, uh, humans would be, would be uh, it would be a, a showcase for how humans could live in harmony with, uh, with, with the earth and with all living, living forms, no. So it was called, so then it was set up as a place called Ecozoic Learning and Living. Yeah. Uh, and so one of the things there, this new vision is that we look at the long, the long history and we, we promote the new story of creation and now have integrated uh, Laudato Si into it. So Ecozoic learning, uh, at the heart of it is the new story of creation, which is the scientific story. Um, it, the story is based on science, yet, yet it's told as a myth, uh, and a myth that challenges us to, to action and to be uh, who do we want to be. Uh, and it, focus on, it focuses on the relationships and functions rather than the objects are the facts of, of the, 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 the long story of creation. It's about basically who our identity, who we are and who we're supposed to be as humans and how we're supposed to relate to uh, the earth 
and to all life forms. And it's, it's, uh, it is told to answer the basic question, where did we come from? And what is our role in the universe? Uh, that, that, that's one of the major things. And then what's our purpose? Why are we here? And that can only be answered in terms of our relationship with, um, with the, rest of, the rest of creation. So all of that is um, confirmed, as I said, uh, by, by Laudato Si. And um, we're happy to have um, anticipated that then. So here is, so in cell, we basically, our basic um, education component was to tell the, the new story of creation. And um, up to 50,000 people have come and heard the story there. So. Uh, we're very happy with that. Uh, when people come to uh, to sell, uh, part of the thing they hear the story, but then there's also a hands-on care for the earth. They either uh, uh, and we teach about permaculture, which is a form of agriculture that is permanent. It doesn't wipe out the the right now. Agriculture is wiping out the. The, the, the capacity of the earth to produce, but permaculture is a, a system where um, it, it, it's, it's permanent agriculture and um, uh, it's a planning design that ensures that all forms of life have, have a place to live. So it, it, the place, it's, it's uh, 1.2 hectares, that's a few, a few acres, and it's divided on, along permaculture lines into different zones uh, in terms of um, begin, so that this is, is sustainable. Um, uh, the zone zero is where we humans operate and zone one is where the humans kind of, where we intervene most through growing vegetables and herbs. And then zone two is small animals. Zone three is flowering and fruit bearing trees. Zone four is timberland. And zone five is wildlife, uh, allowing the wilderness to, 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 um, to. So in, in zone, in the human zone, we practice, um, we, we use native materials, bamboo uh, as, um, as the, the, the form of, we've built the thing on out of bamboo and um it it filipinos love this uh, people have come this is oh this reminds me of when i was um when i was growing up in 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 the province and uh you know it's 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 um the native materials and the you know the air has can move through the houses and uh and it's it's bamboo is the is the main is the main play, thing that's used for building. No, um, then we have the very the, the you know vegetables and and herbal, and um, the Philippines is very rich tropical uh, place, and these things can thrive. Um, then we have our our earthlings other earthlings that we we relate to here yeah and uh, there's lots of uh, fruit flowering and fruit bearing trees as well and then timberland we where we try and um promote the the particular timbers uh, the, the, to the place um and there's some very interesting trees that 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 grow um uh, and we we kind of promote uh, knowledge about um, indigenous uh, or um, endemic um, uh, trees in the in the place. No, and then there's the wildlife. That's where um, we have a we the pond is actually dried up. I'm afraid to say, but um, this was a place where um, uh, biodiversity actually thrived. And there was a, um, one of the things that gave me most pleasure was uh, there was a kingfisher appeared and uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful bird. Uh, but so, so in terms of whatever we're doing here is not reducing 
um, the biodiversity, which most human activities do, but this is actually enhancing uh, the biodiversity of the, of the place. Right. Um, so it's 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 design it's a kind of a, a a showcase for being a sustainable human settlement this is how humans can can it's an example of how humans can live in a sustainable manner uh, on the, on the planet and we practice organic organic farming we don't have any um uh pesticides and um and and um, fertilize, fertilize, you know, artificial fertilizers. Um, so, as I said, we not just preserve biodiversity, but actually we we actually enhance the biodiversity of the place. And then the native agriculture uh, architecture, which I mentioned. Um, uh, we have examples of uh, renewable energy, just examples only. Um, Biodigester. Uh, and then some some panels as well. Uh, the biodigester uh, takes the human waste and the uh, and animal waste and turns it into 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 gas, uh, which can be used as as energy. Yeah. And of course, we have a zero waste management. Um, uh, which we all need to we all need to to learn also so when people come then there are house rules you take off your shoes or sandals when you are inside the houses you wear slippers provided for toilets and shower rooms eat and drink only at the dining area segregate your recyclables and bring them home uh, alcohol is prohibited uh, Smoking is not allowed. We have a smoking area, actually. It's a little bit away from the place. And then, you know, we ask people not to pick the flowers um, and no littering. Uh, don't use antibacterial or germicidal soaps. We have, we have uh, natural soaps there also because that doesn't uh, contaminate the water. And um, similarly with shampoos and things like that. Um, we, of course, we ask people to put off their mobile phones and get away from that for a while when, when the sessions are going on. And um, lights off at 10. Uh, and then before leaving the place properly, place properly the blankets and bed sheets near the dormitory facade. facade. Yeah. So then um, there is the um, Earth Tour. Uh, where people, you know, are reinvited to what we're trying to do is reconnect people uh, with the earth community. So we kind of get people to use their five senses. This is basic kind of stuff, but this is what we humans need to do. Um, uh, and so there's touch and there's seeing, smell the flowers, taste the herbs. And hear the animals and birds and in the birds, the insects and the wind, and then open your mind and heart to to what uh, creation is is um, is saying to us. And and this is in, in line with uh, with Laudato Si also, um, where you know Pope Francis says that you know God speaks to us in many ways in scriptures and that, but that God has written a book. And all the letters of the book are are, are all the 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 um, all the um, creatures. Uh, each creature is is a word of God, and that we are to open ourselves to that. We very much believe that <clears throat> that that the human we've lost our connectedness with with Earth, consequently also with one another, and ultimately with God. So this is a, just a kind of to give people an experience of getting back to where where we belong. And that's that's what cell is about. And as I said, about fifty thousand have already have already come there. And because of the pandemic and because of a few more things, which uh, the the traffic situation in Manila, um, we kind of we're 
we're not operating fully as as we should now but but uh, there's a new highway being built near and uh, uh, been built near cell and manila might become more accessible again so we'll see what the future holds thank you thank you so much uh Father Leighton. Um, we are going to have a question and answer section at the end. So please, uh, if for all of our listeners, um, you can just hold on to your questions. Now we're going to hand it off to Miss Amy Echeverria and just so that I can tell you a little bit about her. Um, Amy is our international um, justice, peace, and integrity of creation coordinator for the missionaries in Colombian, and she's also the um, serves as a co-coordinator for the Vatican COVID-19 Commission on Ecology Task Force. Uh, in recent years, uh, Amy has contributed to the founding of international networks and projects, including La Dato Si Movement, the Catholic Nonviolence Initiative, um, the Listen Project, which is we're going to be hearing more about today, the Ecclesial Network's Ray Palm in Latin America, and Rowan in Pacific Asia. She has served on several boards and steering committees for national and international organizations and coalitions, and is dedicated to peace, social, and environmental justice. So welcome, Amy. The floor is yours. Thanks, Cynthia. Hi, everyone. It's nice to be with you. And I just want to say, John, what what a joy it has been to listen to you, and um, it, you've been a friend and mentor uh, for many years. And I remember well my visit to Cell, and the role that 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 visit played in my own personal conversion, ongoing ecological conversion. So it just what a personal joy to to hear you tell the story again. Um, so yes, thank you, um, Cynthia and Wesley for the invitation. And indeed it really is um, an honor and pleasure to share in this conversation with uh, John and Tavita who are two amazing people who've been living Laudato Si long before Laudato Si was even born. Um, but I would like to share with you a little bit about a project that um, that we as Colombians have been involved with since the uh, release of Laudato Si. So if you'll just give me a moment, I'll share my screen. Cynthia, what, what is it that you're seeing on my screen? I'm seeing the slide that says birth of Laudato Si. Okay. Birth of Listen. Great. But it has the slide on PowerPoint. Okay. There we go. And okay. Now you see it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So I, I want to begin with this tapestry. And it is by a Romanian artist. Um, and this tapestry is of God giving birth to life human life and uh, the waters of life, the living waters that are, are deeply interwoven. And this tapestry hangs in uh, the side entrance off of a reception hall where Pope Francis receives guests. I had the occasion to meet Pope Francis in February, 2019 with fellow Laudato Si movement members. And while we met, Pope Francis shared with us this tapestry and its significance to him. He said that every time he passes through to meet people in uh, the reception hall, he pauses in brief prayer to proclaim, proclaim Laudato Si, praise be. And it's in that same meeting that Pope Francis urged us to be maternal and tender hands in this world. It's easy to see for me how Laudato Si would flow 
from the inspiration that Pope Francis receives in this tapestry. The birth of Listen started to germinate not long after um, the release of Laudato Si. And early on through our networks, we were observing a need and hearing a desire among people in university settings to integrate Laudato Si into their missions, into their curriculum, into campus life. Much of like what John was talking about at CELL, um, but in a university context. And so in the course of about two or three years, a small group of us started to meet on a regular basis, which eventually formed a, a global network called LISTEN, which is the Laudato Si International Scholars Tertiary Education Network. And we like LISTEN a lot better. Um, it's a lot less of a, a mouthful. But we focus on, in particular, um, in the messages of Laudato Si, we focus on ecological spirituality, ecological education, and integral ecology. And so that's what I'd like to share with you a little bit more about today. So here you see our logo, um, which I think is it's, it's a meaningful logo for us, and I'd like to share its significance with you. So in the center, you'll see a hummingbird in flight. And this reminds us of the Holy Spirit and a spirituality of listening. We see the wings of color, which brings in the colors of the liturg liturgical seasons of green, white, deep pink, red, and purple. We have the radiant sun, encircling the hummingbird, which is the dawning of a new creation, an ongoing ecological conversion. And then contained within that sun is the swirling sea, planet, and cosmos. These multiple meanings in the water of the sea is baptismal and cosmic, is a kind of a baptismal and cosmic wound. And the planet suggests our interconnectedness as humans and non-human creation. And the cosmic circular mandala-like dimension represents the Trinity, which is often how the Trinity was represented in ancient times. The T in listen is the cross of our Catholic Christian identity as listen. And the prominence of blue throughout honors a Marian feminine spirituality and represents a subtle call to incorporate blue formally as a liturgical color. We spent time in the design of this um, logo in a very discerning, thoughtful, artful way. And that's very much uh, in the spirit of listen. So now I'd like to share with you a bit about our approach to um, integral ecology. And Pope Francis speaks about this um, throughout Laudato Si. And he says, fragmented and isolated knowledge must be integrated into a broader vision that considers an interrelation between ecosystems and between various spheres of social interaction. That's Laudato C 141. And he continues later and says, our efforts at education will be inadequate and ineffectual unless we strive to promote a new way of thinking about human beings, life, society, and our relationship with nature. Laudato Si 2015. And so here you see um, a whole range of entry points into integral ecology. And as members of LISTEN, um, we have people that are theologians and scientists, economists, social scientists, um, 
people that are part of community organizing and um, local politics. And in bringing all of these fields together in an interdisciplinary way, we create space for dialogue and dreaming um, in a way that is hopefully an integral, integral approach. And just a few key points about um, how listen functions, how we relate to one another, which is just as important as the work that we carry out. And so we have a, a few key values and um, approaches that we use. First is vulnerability as a professional criterion. So we allow ourselves to be vulnerable to one another, vulnerable to um, the, the stresses, the um, uncertainties, the cries. And in that vulnerability together, we find our shared strength and our common purpose. We find uh, welcoming is a key dimension of the educational paradigm. Oftentimes, um, academic settings can, can be isolating um, and difficult to, to approach. So we try very hard to cultivate a culture of welcome. Oftentimes in our meetings, we create space for silence so that we can experience a different kind of listening often a fruitful kind of listening. Uh, so often, as you all know, I'm sure in your own ministries, meetings can be very full of ideas and um, plans and decision-making, um, but we find it in, and, and as, as they should be, but creating space for silence is, is essential. Creativity as a personal and collective process. We try to incorporate um, non-traditional forms of communication and expression. So through art, um, song, um, the very few times we've met in person um, through um, outdoor experiences, engaging, um, you know, behind, outside of our desks and, and computers. We recognize uncertainty as a leaven in discernment. I think oftentimes we can be very uncomfortable with uncertainty. And I think what we experience is that there's a lot revealed when we're uncertain. Um, when we allow ourselves to receive rather than um, force a particular path. Friendship is a critical dimension um, and form of containment in times of crisis. So when we do face difficult situations um, and difficulties in, in um, the work that bonds of friendship are important co-creating and co-working as a, as a form, uh, a work methodology. Um, so often we choose our, in our context, um, it's you do one thing, I do another thing, and there is a lack of um, true co-creation. So we strive very hard to do that. Bilingualism, um, we conduct all of our meetings bilingually and our communications are bit bilingual. And uh, this brings much richness to our conversations. So let me uh, share a little bit about um, educational, ecological education and how we approach that. Pope Francis talks about this and he says, um, environmental education should facilitate making the leap towards the transcendent, which gives ecological ethics its deepest meaning. It needs educators capable of developing an ethics of ecology and helping people 
through effective pedagogy to grow in solidarity, responsibility, and compassionate care. One of the models that of, of pedagogy that we lean strongly into is um, based on the work of Otto Schammer and Theory U. And here I'd like to just say a little bit about um, the four kinds of listening that we focus on. First is a listening of habits. And we use this in a model of um, online education, which has been, um, uh, because of the pandemic, um, much of our work is done online. So we begin with a listening from habits. And this is really about um, how most of the time people uh, are tuning in and listening to people around them and situations. And it's really about reconfirming what we already know out of existing opinions. And you know that feeling of you could say um, when we're listening to somebody, oh yeah, I know that, I'm, I'm familiar with that. But then we move to uh, uh, the next level um, deeper of listening, and that is a listening from the outside. And this is about taking in new information, an opening of the mind, and that feeling of when you listen to somebody, you say, oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that, or that's new. And there's some kind of um, stirring that happens. The third kind of listening is a listening from within. And this is an empathetic opening of the heart kind of listening and tapping into a different kind of intelligence. And that's when you have that feeling when you're listening to someone and you say, oh, I, I know how you feel about that. Perhaps when we're talking about the cry of the earth and we share with someone our deep, um, our deep concerns are, are the human cry bound with the, the natural cry. And so it places us in a much different relationship. And then the final level of listening is listening from the source. And that is the deepest kind of listening. It is a generative listening that opens our will to allow something new to emerge. And you kind of say, after you've had a conversation with somebody in this listening from the source, you walk away and you feel, say to yourself, I, I feel different. Something's changed within me. It's that conversion experience. And so this model of education in the context of um, integral ecology is working with universities and students to explore this, uh, this kind of learning that is um, experiential at times, much like what the work that um, Father John talked about. Um, but it's also forming people who can then be leaders in their own communities and creating a kind of structural approach to how we integrate Laudato Si into university life. And then thirdly, um, a third element that I mentioned is ecological spirituality and um, everything is interconnected. And Pope Francis talks about how the human person grows more, matures more and is sanctified more to the extent that he or she enters into relationships going out from themselves to live in communion with God, with others and with all creatures. That's Laudato Si 240. And so one of the resources that we've developed um, is this liturgical guide for season of creation and our work as LISTEN to develop an international commission for uh, liturgical review and reform with the hope that eventually the season of creation will become embedded officially within the liturgical calendar and that the lectionary and sacramental preparation and catechism will all have an integrated integral um, ecological lens. Um, 
this was just um, some some voices of our listen members, but I'll uh, just move on through My that. My name is Dor And um, these are just some of the listen members. Um, we have since we started about uh, uh, I guess officially two years, but um, uh, probably over the past four years, we have members, institutions, and individuals from all continents, um, from major universities and educational centers of all kinds, um, probably upwards of um, at least 100 uh, higher education institutions and um, at least that in individual members. So um, that's what I had to share with you about LISTEN. And if you are interested in learning more about the LISTEN network and how to be involved, particularly if you're in a university setting, um, you're very welcome to contact me or visit the website, which you can see in the middle of the screen, uh, listen.mn.co, which is a platform called Mighty Network. And it's very interactive. I mean, certainly invite you to visit there. So I think that's everything. And I just wanted to say thank you all, thank you all again for your kind attention and the invitation to be a part of this conversation today. Wishing you all a blessed Earth Month. Thank you so much, Amy. That was great. And great that that's happening at the university level with all of our youth. So yes, thank you so much for that. Uh, now we're gonna move on um, to our third and last speaker, um, Tavita Neikasawau. Uh, he is our Peace, Just Ecology and Justice Coordinator in Fiji. He, um, for the Missionary Society of St. Columban, he's a human rights defender as well as an indigenous rights defender. He organized the Commission of Ecology, Ecological and Social Justice, which started in 2017 um, with the Archdiocese of Suva. Tevita comes from a small village on the North Island of Vanua Lebu, Fiji. His home, uh, in his home village, um, once located by the sea, has had to relocate um, now up the mountain due to rising sea levels. So we're so happy to have you, Tavita, and to listen from you and your work in Fiji. So, back up. Bulavinaka, everyone, Bulavinaka, Cynthia, Bulavinaka, USA, and all parts of the world. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Um, I have to apologize. We're having uh, glitches of internet drops here in Fiji. So bear with me if you cannot hear me for a second or two. Uh, Cynthia, I would wish to share my PowerPoint presentation. Yes, and, please. Uh, can you do it now? You should be able to do it. Right. There we go. Yes. Now? now you can just make it. Yes. If you can just put it in uh, the slideshow mode. Right. mode. Mm -hmm. Perfect. There you go. That's okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, I was asked to bring in some some context. Of, uh, I'm, I'm thankful to Father John and uh, and Amy for those two great presentations. We, we are trying, we we have been and trying to be uh, for the term ecozoic clearing. I'm I'm extremely proud because that's exactly how many of us are still living here in the Oceania and Fiji uh, and in our islands in our rural setting. We were using uh, natural timber, bamboo. I, I grew up living in bamboo, uh, house, uh, wall, floor, roof, all fully bamboo, um, water pipes, bamboo, 
uh, rafts, bamboo, <laughs> almost <laughs> every a form of trans transportation from the river to the sea is bamboo. So that's extremely, extremely elevating and empowering for us here in the South Pacific and in Fiji because our way of life is changing rapidly because of uh, globalization. We are moving into man-made structures like tin and concrete, which is taking a lot out of the environment. And I'm very grateful and thankful for, for the cell. And if, uh, if this, this is a powerful tool that can reconnect the way of the Oceania people back because we are rapidly developing. And I would wish to help to help this have have this again, because our environment and our whole creation has has as much right to feel and happy and happy for them as they are intended to be. The reason we are saying this, we are under enormous um, resource stress and human resource here in the Oceania region because of the demand of our resource for development, especially for resource for extractions for to be used in more developed countries. So we are, um, our, our voices is coming very much uh, towards our role and responsibility towards life and the well-being and earth is vital, which, we, which without we cannot live. We are, we are saying this because we, act, we completely, um, uh, um, uh, we completely rely on our natural, uh, on our environment, on the whole earth itself, our environment to survive, especially for us here, which we are still living in an almost um, uh, ecozoic living and most of our villages are. Therefore, we must treat our whole mother earth and natural resource with due care and respect. And I'm bringing this because of the impacts of, um, of development coming in, especially from the extractive industries and, and this, goes from the terrestrial land, uh, rivers, foreshore, and including our deep sea. And you can see here, this is one of our communities in, in Fiji. Uh, this is actually in a Columban, uh, Christ the King Paris in Ma. It's in the west of Fiji. And this is where you can see, this is the first ever black sand mining in the South Pacific. Black sand is actually mining of sand just from the mouth of the river, as you can see here. And the sand is black, it's magnetite, which is used for metal, a lot of metal ore. And, and this, why I'm bringing this, because Botua is just like a lot of coastal villages around Fiji. They live along four shores. And this, where you see these um, huge uh, uh, metallic teeth of uh, refineries that suck out sand, and you can see these pipes, these are where women fish. These are nearby villages. You can, from the village to here, it's about uh, uh, three to five minutes on, on a horsepower. So you can see the effects is extremely close to the people. Uh, why we are bringing this up? Because this is how you see it. See, this is a mangrove. This is where women pick seashells. And, and you can see the huge, and this is how the sludges are pumped back in. And this is the same mechanism you use for deep sea, deep sea mining, which um, we as Oceania people, we are absolutely <laughs> reliant on the ocean itself. Without the ocean, we are, we are no longer exist. We lose our way of life. We lose ourselves and we lose our coexistence with other human beings to you, to our great nation and to God himself, because this is who we are. We, uh, so why this is currently happening now, and we visited this again last year, and one of our parish of Christ the King is in Ba, and actually this village, Botua, is named after St. Columban himself. So our Columban presence is helping bring the message of the sea, and these people are all uh, seafarers and they live by the main groups, all the medicine, their food, uh, the, the, the structures for their houses come from a main group river, like you can see here. And this kind of destruction will change the way of life for people. And we will no longer be able to be ecozoic because of the demands of um, big countries and big corporations from the Western countries that have immense pressure 
on our on our ecosystems and and our people and it's changing our the ways of how people behave live changing our culture changing our economy it's actually changing our very spirituality and uh, the other place uh, of significance that I want to bring, you see, if you know, if come to Fiji, Fiji is a beautiful place. It actually has been nominated, nominated a few times as one of the best places in the world to visit. And we have a, a, a sand dune in single 3,000 years, and it is an uh, exceptional um, ecosystem because uh, and why it, it is that, and you see the sand over here is cov covered also with the same sand here in Ba, and they are trying to mine this too, because it has the same richness of magnetite that uh, it's in this river, and which is also here, and this is Singatok, and this is the whole beautiful, I'm standing here with an elder, from uh, Singatoka, and this is, you can see this beautiful river, and um, it, on that um, head there, on that hill there is the sand dune. This sand dune is actually uh, a national park in Fiji. This is the only natural barrier that protects this whole valley from the oncoming of the sun, removing that sand and removing all these mangroves from the, it will actually destroy this town. And, we, and, and you see how close this town and the people live. And because of the demands of this, and, and Fiji is being subjected to this increased demand of these resources, because we are rich in, in, in these resources. And um, that's why we are bringing this up, because it actually changes how people behave and live because our ocean is connected to us. And here we are standing on that, uh, on that sand dune with a group of people who believe in, the, in ecology and, uh, and uh, care of creation. And you see the Pacific Ocean is connected directly to, uh, to the river and to the towns and to the people and to the mountains. And beyond this, this is the Singatoka Sandium Ocean. Right now, prospect from deep sea mining is in place. So um, as a voice for our ocean here from, uh, from the Oceania people of Fiji, we are seeking um, you to understand our situation because for us, ocean and land and sea and sky, they are not just land, sea and sky. They are the living embodiment of ourselves. We see ourselves as the sea, we see ourselves as the sand, we see ourselves as we are one with them. So that is why it is, we are saying that our ocean is connected to us. And that is why we must not harm her. We are the people of the ocean. This is a, a very... Uh, No my my it just dropped can i go back yes yeah. please you Sorry. can share your screen we can hear you now okay all right sorry for that that's one of the technological uh, we have no problem and if you can make the screen bigger in the and that is why we as senior people, right? Is that okay? Why we are saying no to this? Because deep sea mining is not needed, not wanted, not consented. Um, the international law of the sea uh, requires that only states talk about this. And um, as you know, our forefathers have traveled through the South Pacific Ocean and landed here in Fiji as the legend uh, has, fought, uh, has been said. And said, um, and saying that uh, we in Fiji right now, most of us, while our, our coastal, um, coast, 
soil and fossil and rivers are being extracted. Now and again, our, the, the, the last frontier, our deep ocean, is now at the explore, exploration stage. And we are crying out. This is the Pacific Blue Line uh, um, logo that we are standing with, that we do not need deep sea mining. It is not wanted. It is not consented because we as a people, we are not asked for this. Only a few of those uh, elite and powerful up in uh, our states and, few, and, and corporations, they do this. And uh, there is no way for us, uh, our voices to be heard. So that's why we are uniting with other organizations, with the church, and, and of course, uh, through to, to voice this. And that, that is the simple... Uh, what deep sea mining can do and, and can destroy because it has much further imp uh, impacts uh, on the foreshore and, and, and then the rivers because it, it covers a lot of huge areas and most of these areas have not been explored by human beings and we do not know the impacts. And as we know, this, the, the ocean itself cover is the blanket that covers a lot of carbon dioxide. It absorbs and it is the biggest resource that we have. So that is why we are saying this out loud now. Because our own integrity and future is at stake if we do not defend our land and our ocean. And here in, two, in this two pictures, you see folks like you and I, women, uh, these are the people of Singapore trying to defend their, their very precious um, and, and river system up to their mountains. And here you see the children speaking up, speaking up to our to our government and the river beside them. And they're standing beside their, and you see the mangroves. We are, they are asking for, um, for, for, a, for a better future. And we can help this because the, the pressure is coming from external, external pressure. The demand is coming from outside of Fiji and the Australia. The need for the resources from within here. We do not need this resource to be used here. It's actually what we used to live with. We are perfectly in harmony with them. But when the 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 arm, the teeth uh, uh, to grind money comes in, this is what causes a lot of problem for us, and it develops a lot of negative ways in thinking, and uh, like that, it affects our spirituality. We as indigenous people have a, a unique spirituality that is very connected to Laudato Si and Ecozoic living, and uh, we 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 know who we are with with trees, birds, and sea, and rocks and sand, and and uh, and that is our our voices coming up. And it is all our duty to thank you very much for giving me time and, and thank you very much for, for the facilitators to allow the voice of Chenya people, especially in the Chenya region. Thank you so much, Savita, for that presentation and apologies for to the audience for the uh internet uh disconnection that's uh how it happens right in in, uh, in different well it's very difficult so thank you time to be where for the audience we will be sending his presentation so you will be getting uh the the information that he shared that way um, now we're going to uh, move to uh, question and answer section. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat. And uh, if you want to direct them to someone specifically uh, um, to one of our speakers, let us know there. So please drop your questions. Um, and I know I saw already a, pre a question uh from maria maria was asking Tavita, what is the what was uh, in, in one of your slides um what is a sand extractor for what is the sand extractor the black, for the black sand 
What is it it's, used um, for? It's used for producing uh, uh, the black sand. It has a mineral called uh, magnetite. It's used to produce, it is one of the core elements for producing metals. Uh, and these are high grade metals. And metals is used in everything for production in all over the, for, for the world. And uh, it, it's, it's a very good use because we use that in our phones, in, in our spoons, in our forks, in our, in our cars, in our buildings. And that, is, that comes from this end and it is of high grade, high grade quality. That's why it makes it uh, uh, almost, um, uh, uh, it makes it very precious. Uh, it's a commodity now that's uh, for high price. So uh, that's, uh, that's one of the main use in airplanes. It's used in all construction. And that is just one of the main use. Thank you. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. Uh, I do have a question for Father John. If you you mentioned uh, the number of people who who have visited cell, uh, can you groups have visited um, in the past? You're muted, brother. Can you repeat that? I didn't find. Yeah. Yes. Uh, just if you can tell us a little bit more of of who have. Who has visited cell in the past? What kind of groups? Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> we, at one point, uh, it, it was mostly schools. And at one point we were tied up with the, the top schools in Manila, uh, Ateneo and um, La Salle. And, um, but, uh, so it was mostly students, but there is also, you'd get groups of religious and also different groups coming there. Um, it mostly, it, it was day trips. People would come in the morning and go home in the evening. What happened was that then that the traffic got so bad in Manila that it became, uh, not viable it was it from being one hour away it was three hours away and that was six hours coming and going so it just didn't work out so um we, but <clears throat> hopefully there's a new highway now and hopefully we'll be nearer to manila again um we never uh, one of the disappointing things is we never really made it with the local area, but we might be able to do that again now, now that we've done a lot of work with the Laudato Si movement with the local diocese and all that. So um, right now we're in a re retake, a take, a take two uh, at, at this point and we'll see, but we have somebody very talented who's staying there and we'll, we'll build on that. So we're going to give it another another um, uh, re, a, a re go and, and see what happens. We, we targeted, uh, eventually, in, originally we targeted for, um, uh, for 15 years and we've gone way over that already. So, uh, you know, yeah. Great work, what you're doing there. Uh, um, a question for Amy. And Amy, you share a lot about you know this process of 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 learning and listening and and this dialogue, right? And so that we can uh, have more awareness. Um, what would you suggest to other people living in? Because today we hear from the, from the Philippines and from Fiji. What would you suggest for people living in the U.S. or in other parts of the world? How can they? Um, start this pro similar process that you all are doing with listen um, where they live. Thanks, Cynthia. I think um, when people gather together around a common um, a common purpose, 
a common dream, a common vision, a common hope. There's much that can be imagined and done and transformed. And so I, I believe that when people are able to identify within their own community where there is woundedness, where there is um, a longing for reparation and healing, that in identifying that together as a community, it brings people together to go through a journey, both as individuals and as a community. And so I think that's a good place to start is to ask ourselves, where in the world, where in my life, where in my community, is there a, a woundedness that's calling out to be healed? And that becomes a gathering point, a gathering place and um, for transformation as individuals, as a community, and not separate from the earth, not separate from the land and the sea and the water. I think both John and Tavita talked about that, but that, you know, we're all companions um, on the journey. starting with, with our communities, right? Thank you, thank you all. I don't see any more questions in the chat. Um, so again, thank you so much to, for the three of you who are collect, con connecting from different parts of the world, different uh, times of the day. Thank you, we really appreciate it. For everybody who, who, who listened, uh, uh, please be on the lookout for that email. Wesley will be um, sending the presentation and the recording um, of, of this webinar. And we'll see you in our next webinar. Um, Cynthia, yes. may I request one minute? Of course. May I request one minute? We have a 30 second uh, Earth video that we produced uh, Justice Peace here with Caritas Fiji on Earth Day was last week. We're still in Earth Month. We are currently running on our national television here in Fiji, which we would like to share with you 30 seconds. It's a very fast. It's, um, it's okay. a song composed by our Archbishop here, uh, Peter. And um, it's 30 seconds. So if you allow me to share it, you will watch it on your screen. Okay. Can you go yes. ahead now? Please, please go ahead and share, yes. Uh, and with this video, we'll close our webinar. Thank you all for, for joining us. The mother of the time, stop the logging, stop the mind, we gotta protect our home.